Grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Hyde. These days of COVID-19 are really difficult, aren't they? I think we're all feeling the impact of, of isolation. So I don't want to try and paper over the reality that we're all feeling. But at least we're now in the season of spring with signs of new life all around us. If you're like me and you suffer from hay fever, there can be some significant negatives about pollen in the air. But isn't there something marvellous about the fact that a tree whose branches could have been as bare as anything two or three weeks ago and now filled with a wonderful white or pink blossom? Just fantastic. And today we are celebrating God's good gift to us of creation. And we'll be showcasing some of the ways that local people are going about caring for it. But that's coming up in a few moments. By the way, next week, September the 26th, given it's close to the feast day of uh, St Francis of Assisi, we will be giving thanks to God for the blessing of animals and we're inviting you to participate. We're inviting you to send us pictures of animals that have been a blessing to you. Now, don't forget that you can contact us and find out what's going on at St Luke's or what's not going on at St Luke's by going to our website, which is stlukesuca.org.au, or you can go to our Facebook page. And, on, and in both places, you can find ways to share those photographs that I've mentioned. The prayers for today's service are adapted from resources that come to us from the Church of Scotland website. So if you want to read the whole of the prayers that we're using, because we are modifying them a bit, you can go to the website and look them up. Let's come now to a time of prayer. Let's pray. Holy Creator God, whose knowledge is too wonderful for us, who created the world and all that it contains, who knows each blade of grass, and hair upon our head. We are grateful for the part we play in your vision for creation. And we offer you praise for your infinite love for us and our world. Merciful God, we confess that we think we know what is best. We go our own way instead of yours. We fill our needs before the needs of others. Forgive us for relying on our own wisdom instead of yours. Forgive us for the ways in which we place ourselves at the centre of your creation, instead of recognising that we are part of it. Amend what we are, direct what we shall be, so that we may delight in your wisdom and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. We pray all this in your name, one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen now to some selected verses from a wonderful psalm, a psalm which celebrates the creative activity of God, Psalm 104. Now we've chosen to just select some verses because the psalm is quite long, but I'd encourage you to get out your Bibles and to read it in its entirety. It contains some wonderful images. What is clear from the psalm is that the creative activity of God lies behind all the wonders of the world that surround us. Francis Collins is currently head of the National Institute of Health in the United States of America and has a key role in that country's response to COVID-19. Collins is a Christian, actually he's a member of the United Methodist Church. In a recent interview he spoke humbly about the role of a scientist and I quote, you get a chance once in a while as a scientist to discover something that no human knew before, but God knew it. It's a little glimpse of God's mind. In a way, that's what science is doing. It's glimpsing God's mind and being in awe of it. End of quote. Let's listen now to Psalm 104 as the ancient writer, the ancient poet, invites us to be in awe at what God has done in creation. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord my God, you are very great. 
you are clothed with honour and majesty, wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You set the beams of your chambers on the waters. You make the clouds your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, fire and flame your ministers. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow between the hills, giving drink to every wild animal. The wild asses quench their thirst. By the streams, the birds of the air have their habitation. They sing among the branches. From your lofty abode, you water the mountains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of your work. You cause the grass to grow for the cattle and plants for people to use, to bring forth food from the earth and wine to gladden the human heart, oil to make the face shine and bread to strengthen the human heart. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ship and the whales that you formed to play in it. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have been. In another hymn celebrating God's creative activity found in the first chapter of the book of Genesis, we are reminded that we humans are part of God's good creation and that we have a particular part to play in creation. We are entrusted with what the text says is dominion over the animal kingdom and by inference then over everything from the air to the wonders of Californian redwoods. Now, dominion, the word dominion, is not about randomly exploiting things for one's own sake. Rather, it's quite the reverse. It's about taking responsibility for. It's about caring for. It's about offering good stewardship of. As I underlined in the last video, that's the video for, for last week, in which we looked at wisdom, and wisdom being found in Jesus Christ, to be truly human, to live a truly abundant life, one is to follow, one is to embrace the way of Jesus. And Jesus was the one who, who, although the very Son of God, gave his life out of love for the world. The one who came, even though he was the very Son of God, to serve, not to be served. And so therefore, surely, when we think of the world we live in, Part of our role as followers of Jesus is to care for the wonderful creation that the Creator, God the Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit, has spoken into being. Our responsibility as part of creation is to care for it. Just recently, three Christian leaders, the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew of Constantinople, which is Istanbul these days, who is the first among equals in the Eastern Orthodox Church, Pope Francis and the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Wilby, have issued a joint statement relating to climate change and the need for us to care for creation. Now, the, the document in its entirety is easy to find on the internet, so I'm only going to share with you a quote, but it gives you a bit of a sense of what this document's about. We call on everyone, whatever their belief or worldview, to endeavour to listen to the cry of the earth and of people who are poor, examining their behaviour and pledging meaningful sacrifices for the sake of the earth which God has given us. End of quote. In other words, we are to care for this world that God has given us the responsibility of being good stewards of. So, Let's, for a few moments, reflect on our role in caring for the world. And also, let us celebrate some of the wonderful ways that that's been happening around us, quite locally. And you'll see some views in a few moments in some of the pictures you're about to see 
of some of the endeavours that local people, including people from St Luke's, have engaged in to care for the environment in which we find ourselves. God of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ, you promise to hear us when we pray to you in his name. Confident in your love and mercy, we offer our prayer. Empower the church throughout the world in its life and witness. Guide the rulers of the nations. Inspire them to strive for peace and justice, that all your children may dwell secure, free of war and injustice. May the world's poor and suffering have their rightful share of food, medical care and shelter, and so have the necessities of a life of dignity. Give us respect and profound care for all you have created, so your whole creation may resound in an anthem of praise to your glorious name. Sustain and comfort all who suffer, all who need your healing touch. Make the sick whole, give hope to the dying, comfort those who mourn, uphold all who suffer in body or mind. Not only those we know and love, but also those known only to you, that they may know the peace and joy of your supporting care. O oh God, in your loving purpose, answer our prayers and fulfill our hopes. In all things for which we pray, Give us the will to seek to bring them about. For the sake of Jesus Christ, Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Today we want to recognise and thank Michelle Walker for many things, but particularly, given our theme, her amazing leadership as part of the St Luke's Environment Group and the Repair Cafe. We give you many thanks, Michelle, and we're really going to miss you. And blessings, and safe return to Queensland. go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.